Hey, it's Kara and Dobie Jo is back with us from the neighbor's house where she gets extra treats when the neighbor comes home. All the yards, mine and my neighbor's yard are all fenced together so our two dogs can run and play together and visit each other's houses without having to get um, out in the road. Dobie Jo, you wanna come back up? Come on, come on back over. We missed you, come on. Come on back up, Dobie Jo up. Good girl, turn around, sit. Good, stay, stay. Anyway. Fence in your dogs. Take good care of your dogs. Don't let your dogs run loose in the road. That's a scary thought. All right, today we are going to be working on page 44 and 45 in the book. We're going to learn our B7 chord. Now, the interesting thing about B7 is, is that it employs all four of these fingers, and we might not be ready for that. As a matter of fact, the students that I see in person learn the three finger version of this B7 first. Now the three finger version of this B7 is actually a B11 chord. Okay, let's talk about that real quick. So the B11 chord that I want you to learn first is second finger, first finger, third finger as shown at the very bottom of page 44 like that. Now what do we do whenever we learn a new chord? We put our fingers right where we want them to go up nice and high on the frets. Then we open our fingers all the way up and we very slowly place them back right where they were. And we keep doing that until our fingers understand exactly what we want them to do. And I promise you that using this technique and having patience with yourself to do this will do you so much good you get those chords down much faster if you take the time to do this kind of work over and over and over again, okay? Now, once you've done the B11 chord with those three fingers, you can get those guys to going where they want, and then you can add your pinky in on that second fret of that first string, so it becomes a four finger B7. So open, all four fingers go down, okay? Now, when you're first learning any of these chords, probably what's going to happen is one finger is going to take the lead, it's going to go down first, and then a couple of the other fingers will find their place, and then finally, if you're using four fingers like this B7 chord, the pinky will land. What you can do sometimes to help you learn this is you can take a look at how you're fretting your chord, and if you're taking steps, one, two, and three, four, to do it, do those steps backwards. Pinky, ring finger, index, middle. So you start building the B7 backwards and then go back to the way you were doing it and if you practice it both ways your fingers are going to start going hey enough of this we're just going to all work together at the same time if that's okay with you and at which point you'll say that's exactly what I wanted you to do come on back up we missed you come on don't be Joe up don't be Joe up oh look come on don't be Joe up good girl sit good girl stay she just might be tuckered out. She just might be tuckered out. Okay, so once again, you want to do that back and forth, open, spread, and repeat business with your B7 chord until you feel like you've got it down. Now, we're going to do an awful lot of shifting from our E chord to our B7 chord. Those two chords like each other a lot, and you're going to find them working together a lot. So you might as well practice going from an E to a B7 and back to E. And that's what I'm showing you how to do on the middle of the page 44. Okay. Now, there's a couple of different things that happen when we go from an E. So get your E in position for me. What we're going to do is we're going to take our... Um, third finger and we move it back a string and then we take our second finger we do nothing with it we shift our first finger forward and then we drop the pinky in let me show you that again sometimes when you're not here I can focus my attention a little bit better but I'm always glad for the company Okay, so back to, back to what I was talking about. When we go from E to B7, your middle finger gets to stay in exactly the same place. It's not going to move when you move from the E to the B7. So lock him in. Sometimes I do this thing with my students, and I'll walk over, and literally I'll touch that finger that's not supposed to move, and I'll say, I have just super glued that finger down to the guitar, and it will not ever move again until I tell it to move, right? So when I do that kind of thing, it's sort of like it's a hypnosis kind of thing, and they'll... they'll, they'll lock their finger in and it won't move. So 
lock your middle finger down. Do not move your middle finger right now. That's our E chord. When we go to B7, the third finger shifts down a couple of strings, and the pointer finger shifts to the lower string, and then the pinky falls in place like that. Okay, so practice those shifts from E to B7, back and forth. E, B7, E, B7. One of the things that separates me from some other teachers is that I break these details down and really talk to you about the mechanics of what's going on when you change chord shapes. All right? Sammy, you want to come up and say hi? I tried to get you to do a video with me a while ago, but no, you're just going to rub on the tripod legs and make the camera shake. All right, but anyway, E to B7, back and forth, okay? All right, let's look at page 45. Now, I want you to play page 45 with me only after you've practiced this E to B7 change and you feel pretty comfortable with it, okay? So if you don't feel comfortable with it yet, don't worry about playing this page with me yet. Let's see what tempo we want this set at. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this at about 80. No, it's not 80. That's 63. I'm going to set this at 63, and we're going to use this click to give us eighth notes. So what that means is we're going to go strum, 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 strum every other beat, okay? If we were counting that, we would be counting it like this. One and two and three and four and okay all right i'm gonna stop at the t i'm gonna stop i'm gonna start at the top of page 45 and i'm not gonna stop until we are done each exercise we are going to do twice oh my gosh can we do it i think we can here we go one two three four one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and keep that right hand going, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four and back to E don't stop strumming and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and don't stop strumming one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay line number two one two three four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four
two, three, and four, and keep the right hand going. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and keep the right hand going. Line four, we're doing the boom diddy boom diddy pattern. Here we go. One, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and boom diddy boom diddy. Keep strumming. Boom. Exercise number five. We have two lines here. We are going to incorporate our A chord, so you might want to stop the video and practice your E to A combination, switching back and forth to those two fret, two frets, two chords before we do this exercise five. Okay, I'm going to count us off and we're going to do it. One, two, three, four, and one. B7 and a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Repeat back to E one. Back to E and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. All right. Thanks for being patient with me. This takes a lot of patience, right? Um, let's look at line six, exercise six, I should say, because it's got three lines in it. Now, this is that 12 bar blues. I believe we did this in the key of A already, 12 bar blues in the key of A. This would be considered 12 bar blues in the key of E. We're doing boom, diddy, boom. Diddy. We're going back to the boom diddy boom diddy rhythm on this though. Um, all right, gang. 
keep your eyes open. Here we go. One, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Here comes the A. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and back to E. One, and two, and three, and here comes B7. to E. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and last line. One, and two, and three, and four, and A. Here comes the B7. Right? I said I was going to do each one of those twice, but I think I'm only going to do six one time. And I'm going to go back up to the top of the page. Let's see how much time I've spent on this. Yeah, I'm almost getting pretty close to my limit. All right, just for fun, I am going to do exactly what we just did together, but I'm going to take this up to 120. And I'm going to start on exercise line one, and I'm going to play the whole page without repeats. Okay, this is going to go fast. Here we go. You should not be able to do this yet, but once you get um, to the point of making these chord changes and you've worked your way up, this is the kind of speed that we're going to be talking about, and this is what it'll sound like, okay? Just to give you an idea, page 45, exercise 1 through 6, the entire page, at that faster, much faster tempo, giving us quarter notes at 120. Here we go, no repeats, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, Four, seven. Exercise two. Exercise three. Exercise four. Exercise five. that you can't play it that fast yet. That's just to show you what we're shooting for, right? If you can't play each one of those lines at that slower pace with me without making a mistake, you shouldn't try to play it any faster. You want to slowly speed it up until you've reached the speed that we just played and that you can do that without making a mistake, right? If you speed things up and you're making mistakes, you are training yourself to always make mistakes. It's muscle memory. Whatever you tell your hands to do, they're going to do it over and over and over again. And if you play things fast and sloppy, you're going to be a fast and sloppy player. I'm sorry, but that's the facts, right? I don't want to, I don't want you to be fast and sloppy. I want you to be fast and clean and tight, right? All right, so we're going to end this lesson. The next time we see each other, we are going to knock out page 46 and maybe 47, but definitely 46, okay? Thanks so much for having the patience to do these exercises with me. I will see you next time.